Now that we've learned the definition of startups and the purpose of them, uh, we're going to get into what we call the Build, Measure, Learn feedback loop. Now, the Build, Measure, Learn feedback loop is a very popular tool uh, included in Eric Reese's Lean Startup, which similar to last video, I certainly recommend that you pick up a copy uh, and go through it. Uh, it can be a little bit heavy at times, but it really does provide a good foundation as to the underlying philosophy for how entrepreneurs should approach new ventures. So the basic idea behind the Build, Measure, Learn feedback loop is that engaging in feedback uh, is what we call an iterative process, meaning that it's circular and we're going through it uh, in a very circular type fashion. And so there are three stages to this. Um, naturally, the first is what we call build. The second is measure. And the third is learn. And notice that each of these is co connected in a circular fashion, meaning that we're constantly involved in this process of learning what consumers enjoy uh, and what maybe frustrates them about the products and the services that we create. Now, the basic premise that most people or the, the basic idea that we're trying to uh, kind of fend against uh, is the belief that I know everything my customer wants. And although there are certainly some truths to what we probably know about our customers, um, it's impossible to understand everything about our customers and what they uh, want and need and what we should create to solve problems. Um, so because of this, we're going to engage in this process of experimentation using the Build, Measure, Learn feedback loop as a visual mechanism to go through this process so that we can better identify what are the things that we should be supporting and what are the things that we should not be supporting. So we're going to start in this build section. The basic idea uh, with this kind of philosophy, if you will, is that there are a lot of assumptions like we talked about in the last video. There are things we simply don't know. We don't know uh, the problems that our customers have. We have beliefs, uh, hypotheses about what those problems are, but we really truthfully don't know unless we work in the industry. Uh, we have assumptions about the solutions that customers will accept, right? We, we've created something, and this happens a lot when students come into my class, uh, is they come in with an idea and we have a solution already. And what happens is we begin this very uh, difficult process of developing a solution and then trying to find a problem that it solves, uh, which is very backwards uh, and it's incredibly frustrating. Uh, just ask my students. Uh, and we also have assumptions about the value, what level of value customers will accept. We have assumptions about pricing, assumptions about distribution. I mean, you name it. There is a laundry list of assumptions that we have when we engage in this process of starting a new venture. Now, if you're like most people, the most people believe that, well, the difficult thing is the idea, right? Once I create the idea, uh, then I move into the launch phase and then I'm releasing my product. It's the final version. Uh, I've got it in stores. I've got it online and people are purchasing it. Uh, but again, the problem is, is throughout this process, at no point have we gotten any kind of valuable customer feedback to ultimately shape our view of the product and refine our understanding of what the customer will accept. So with this process, what we're doing is we're establishing markers, if you will. And each time we're trying to make a decision as to whether or not we're on the right path, right? Remember, with most established companies, they use revenues and profits as a measure if they're on the right path. The problem for us is that we don't have any revenues and we don't have any profits. So as a result, the traditional measures that most businesses use, many established businesses use, right, accounting type metrics are, in, are not important and not helpful to a startup because we don't have a product. We don't have anything to sell. So instead, we can use other things, though, to gauge our level of understanding and to gauge our progress. And those really relate to uh, the interactions that we have with customers. And so if we have these markers at every point, maybe it's a customer discovery interview and we're learning about our customers and then we unveil maybe a mock-up, uh, a visual representation of what a product or like an app would appear to be, and then we get feedback and then we go back to the idea and then we refine 
And then we go again and we create another version. Maybe it's a, a more a higher quality fidelity uh, wireframe. And then we go back again and we refine and then we go a step further and then we refine. And so this whole process is kind of circular in that we're getting feedback and we're going back to the beginning, making changes, and then we're continuing through this process, ultimately improving what happens at launch. Now, before we go through this process, we typically want to identify what we refer to as leap of faith assumptions. Now, these are assumptions that prove to be the most critical to our business. And we're going to go through a couple of examples in future videos so you can see what the, what the types of assumptions I'm referring to. Um, there are things we don't know, and that's obvious, but the leap of faith assumptions are the ones that if they don't hold to be true, then our entire business, as we see it, needs to change in a very significant way. These are the things that we want to test first uh, in order to see if we are on the right path. Um, so we're going to work on identifying leap of faith assumptions. We also talk about minimum viable products in a experiment that allows customers to interact with something that we've created to give them a better sense of the value that we're trying to provide. And then we can see if that is a good fit for what they're trying to accomplish. So in the build phase, we're typically creating these minimum viable products. We're creating something that allows customers to uh, interact with our products and to get a sense for if they really value it. Once we've created something, and remember the whole concept of an MVP is that we're going to go with the least amount of effort, but ultimately something that allows us to achieve a maximum level of learning. So this doesn't mean that we're going to release something that is complete garbage and includes a lot of bugs and all these other problems, uh, it certainly won't be the final version, but it's going to be enough for customers to get what we're trying to provide. So we build this, then we go on to the measure stage, which means we're going to run our experiment. Um, so we're going to develop a list of metrics. Remember, we can't use conventional metrics like revenues and profits and other things, but there are other metrics that we can use to gauge the success of our experiments, things like free trials and things like signups. And then once we run our experiment, we're going to gather data and we're going to evaluate those results. And we're going to make a decision as to whether or not the assumptions that we identified in the first stage, if those held to be true, did our assumptions survive? If not, we go back and then we retool. We maybe run a different experiment. Maybe our assumptions were inaccurate and we have to make a change to our business in some way, which we commonly refer to as a pivot. Now, that's one iteration. That's one kind of revolution, if you will, through the build, measure, learn feedback loop. And while it's better than nothing to go through at one time, we want to go through this several times over and over, building an MVP, getting feedback measuring the results, seeing if our assumptions held to be true, and going through this process repeatedly at each stage of the process, we're refining our understanding of the product, we're refining our understanding of the customer's problems, and we're getting closer to either product market fit or closer to pivoting our business or even moving on to another idea altogether.